Hey everyone, my name is Vedelin, and in this video we are going to have a look at the new rules of prompting or how the prompting techniques have been evolving through the past six months to a an year and we are going to get a look at the newest guide by OpenAI on how you should more effectively prompt your models. Of course, these types of guides are very general and apply to other frontier models such as Anthropics Quote 3.7 and Gemini 2.5 Pro. First, we're going to go through why longer contexts are now much more easier to use and allow you to get better responses. Then uh, we'll have a look at how are newer models better at following your instructions then how you should add delimiters within your prompts, whether or not you should now be using negating terms, how to structure your prompts taking into account all of these points. And then at the end, I'm going to give you a bonus tip on how you can build better LM applications. Let's get started. If you want to become better AI engineer and see how you can write prompts within complete AI systems, you can subscribe to the ML Expert Pro Get Things Done with AI Bootcamp. Here uh, you will get a complete text tutorials on how you can build AI applications. Also, we're going to be doing live sessions that are going to start on May 9th to May 11th. There, we're going to do three live sessions with uh, lectures, and then we're going to continue after each lecture with a WAP lecture where we're going to do some live coding together, and you will be able to ask questions to me and the whole ML Expert Pro community. So, if you want to join and become a better AI engineer today, go and subscribe to ML Expert Pro. Thank you. The two main resources that I've used to prepare the materials for this video are the Introducing GPT-4 one in the API blog post by OpenAI. Here you can read all of their introduction along with all of the benchmarks that they did. And the other one is the GPT-4.1 prompting guide. Here while they're specifying GPT-4.1, I would say that this is pretty general application of the all of the principles to pretty much all of the available models that we have. The first thing that have changed during the last year is the longer context that is available in pretty much every frontier LOM right now. Anthropic, Google and OpenAI have models that are 200,000 tokens or more in a context window. Of course, I'm not speaking about models such as Llama 4 that can have a 10 million context window, but nobody actually cares about the model. Those models are actually useful. And for my prompting in the last couple of weeks of Gemini 2.5, I was really impressed with how this model is able to handle very long conversations. I had conversations where the context or the initial context was roughly 120,000 tokens. And from there, I was continuing the conversation and the model was pretty much remembering everything and was able to refer to the context even further down the conversation itself. Within the guides from OpenAI, I found this right here, 1 million tokens is more than 8 copies of the entire React code base. So for example, if you're using VS Code or Cursor, you'll probably be able to fit everything within the context along with your instructions for the database and etc. Also, this allows for models to have a longer chain of thought conversations within themselves. So even if models are not specifically reasoning models such as R1 and the all models from OpenAI, your models will be able to still use some of the available tokens for chain of thought and probably give you even better results. Also, if you have tools that are outputting large amounts of text, for example, uh, when you're using web search 
or maybe when you're doing some scraping or have very large documents that are being returned as a result of a tool execution, this will be nicely added to the prompts that you have. And uh, I've already told you from my experience, for example, with Gemini 2.5 Pro, it feels like the context windows are finally being useful. Also here on this chart on the right, you see a benchmark by OpenAI. And here they're saying that, uh, for example, on the X axis, uh, you have this up to a million tokens on the right, even though there is a decrease in accuracy of the performance of the models, uh, models such as GPT 4.1 mini and GPT 4.1 are pretty good at getting accuracy in even larger context. Unfortunately, they didn't compare their models to something like G Gemini 2.5 Pro or Quote 3.7. One of the selling materials that AI gurus were essentially selling to their users were the so-called prompting libraries. And while there is some value within those, it is probably not as effective anymore since you uh, probably don't have to buy prompt library like whatever that contains some magical tricks within it as long as you are following the structures that the authors of those models are actually providing now. Of course, you would still need to write your prompts or you will need to ask the models nicely to write better prompts for you, but you will still need to know how to structure them. And uh, here again by OpenAI, they have evaluation internal benchmark that shows that the newer models 4.1, for example, right here, are much better at instruction following. And what does this mean? You can essentially tell now the models to order the execution of the steps that you want them to do. So for example, for agentic applications, this will be pretty useful to tell, for example, an agent to first start with uh, reading some material, then based on the reading of the material, use some context from the user, etc and follow this order of operations. Also, you will be able now to tell the models to order the outputs in uh, some order that you specify. And of course, yeah, the models are much better at outputting the materials into a specific format, while most of the models are pretty good with pretty much every output format. I found that models are particularly good with Markdown, JSON, and XML. For the last couple of months, the Quote models were the one that introduced the XML formatting within your prompts. And even if you look throughout the system prompts within their models and the examples that they're providing, pretty much every prompt has some sort of XML delimiters. And now, actually, OpenAI are also recommending this as well. They even said within one of the materials, XML performed well in our own context testing. And from my personal experience, this is actually the case. If I'm providing some sort of specific instructions and my prompts are getting larger and larger, I would probably try to incorporate some XML that would say the limits of the elements that I want. And here from the uh, blog post by OpenAI, they again have an example with uh, XML formatting, for example, something that even has attributes to the XML type. It has some internal structure, input and output example. So this is a good uh, use case for XML formatting. So the recommendation here is to start with Markdown as long as you have simpler prompts. And again, most of the Frontier models are very good at understanding Markdown. They do very well with formatting of titles, numbered and ordered lists, and backticks in order to wrap some code within the document. So for example, you can use the titles at 
the first headline h2 h3 etc i found that this works pretty well and of course you can combine some markdown with xml probably most of the models are going to be quite all right with that still if you want to get some sort of repetitive output from the models you will probably still need to break down the model response into different prompts so keep that in mind those models are nowhere near perfect at least as as of now that is and i found in my personal experience that is that when you have dumber model in my case i was prompting gpt4 o mini for a while gemini 2.0 flash in my work and there you will probably want to add a bit stricter delimiters in order to provide better um, outputs from the models and in my case this was pretty much xml and it was working quite all right for gemini and gpt4 o mini probably gpt 4.1 mini is going to be even better than that this one is pretty self-explanatory at least in the past you were encouraged to provide positive reinforcement or positive examples in order to get what you want but at least openai are now saying that within their gpt 4.1 models and up you can use negating terms this is really important when you want to tell the model something like if you don't know the answer please reply with i don't know and uh, it, this would be pretty helpful in so many examples for example when you're uh, doing some extraction of information from some documents in those cases if the extraction is not available or the information is not available within the document you would want the model to reply with i don't know but i found that previous models were extremely likely to hallucinate in such cases hopefully those newer models are much better at least from what i found within the gemini 2.5 pro this is really the case so how do you structure a prompt now with all of the new available tools that you have and the capabilities of the models so this is a structure or example structure from openai and this is the recommended starting point so first you still want to start with a role and objective and uh, for example you are a customer support agent that needs to reply to the customers etc and then you continue with the instructions that you want to provide provide quick responses to the user etc and then you might have one or more reasoning steps use the company rules to etc so uh, in here you will probably apply all of the steps that you want your model to follow in order to answer the question and this will pretty much be within some sort of system prompt then you will probably be happy to send some output formatting instructions for example here you can say i want your reply to be in json uh, specify the schema for the json if you have a pedantic object or something like that also most of the models by default seems to be replying in markdown so uh, this is another great option then you can continue with the examples uh, here i have given you an example between a customer and a chatbot and uh, here you can provide some edge case examples where you want to have specific replies based on the provided input and output so you can go one shot two shot etc from uh, my experience if you have uh, for example three to five edge case examples that are somewhat bizarre or strange you should put them here uh, but also it will be helpful to give one at least general example that is pretty straightforward pretty common sense but still you include it within the prompt right here uh, next is the place when you are going to put your context and this is pretty much the bulk of your prompt that is uh, if you have for example some information from a user database some information about for example customers previous purchases or jira tickets or issues machine information device information etc you should probably put the 
information here within the context. And one thing that is really interesting here is that OpenAI says that you should pretty much repeat the instructions at the end, since the model is going to be much more attentive in a sense to the final instructions. And uh, when you're providing those, you can, of course, still ask it to think step by step, which will unlock, if you will, the chain of thought reasoning that pretty much every model has nowadays, even if the model doesn't have reasoning per se, this will do some sort of minimal reasoning before giving you an answer. And why this is a very strange? Well, basically, you will break the prompt caching with this one, which is pretty bad in practice. So uh, you can think about the ways that this context might change. Of course, this will not be cached, even though uh, this is going to be pretty much the same every time that you're putting everything together. So for example, you might have this instructions that are not cached and of course if you're doing thousand or tens of thousands requests this might add up to your bills while the models are advancing at breakneck speed this is a one very interesting evolution of the newer models so here you see on the person qa evaluation the accuracy of the different models and then on the next row, you will see the hallucination rate. I've uh, read a lot of people that are saying that you can essentially zero out the hallucinations of these models. I don't find this to be the case. Pretty much every model that I've tried thus far, I was able to get it to hallucinate even without a strong or forced approaches to it. So here you see that models such as O1, which is not as powerful as O3 and O4 mini, based on the accuracy right here. Uh, you also see that this model has a relatively lower rate of hallucination, while O3 has pretty much double. And then on top of that, O4 mini has pretty much a 50% rate of hallucination. So uh, these numbers, you of course need to go through the benchmark, but still these numbers tell us that the models are going to a bit higher hallucination rate compared to the previous more simple models. Of course, all of these models are reasoning models. I would be very happy to see evaluations on models that are not reasoning ones but essentially what i'm saying here is that you should not trust the responses you should be able to evaluate the models that you're using and probably expect to still get some sort of hallucinations even if you're having very nice evaluation sets so with tools and tips that I've shown you from the guides from OpenAI, you can now try to write even better prompts. I found that using the correct delimiters and the pretty much good formatting and the structure that they're providing, you can pretty much get better results. Of course, your outputs are not going to be deterministic and nobody can guarantee you that the models are going to provide good answers. So Keep in mind that you should have pretty good evaluation metrics in place. Thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. And if you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to ML Expert Pro. Again, we're going to do live sessions between 9th of May to 11th. Again, we will have lectures and WAP sessions where we're going to do some live coding together and you'll be able to ask questions to me and the whole MXpert Pro community. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.